Hey everybody, so today I want to talk about five teams that I think have virtually zero shot of making the playoffs next year in the NHL. Now, the NHL is kind of wild sometimes with the, how, how much parity there is and how, you know, even teams that we think are going to be absolutely horrible end up not being that bad and you know, we see it every year. There's always some surprises. So it's hard to give a team zero chance of making the playoffs going into a season because no matter how awful they are the year before or how awful we think they're going to be based on their roster, there there always seems to be, at least in the NHL, a slight chance that they could end up being a big-time surprise. Um so it's not like other sports where going into an NFL season, you know that some teams are absolutely going to blow, like be absolutely horrible, and then they are, and you knew that they were, and it's you know obvious to everyone. Same thing with baseball, like everyone knew that the Baltimore Orioles were going to be god-awful this year, and they're absolutely putrid. It's expected. In hockey, in the NHL, you don't always get that... You know, not everything always goes to plan, so to say. You end up seeing some teams that a lot of people thought would be good end up being not so good. You see some teams, like last year, everyone thought the Islanders were going to be a bottom-feeding team, not make the playoffs. You know, the world had ended when John Tavares left. They ended up finishing second in the division and went to the second round of the playoffs. So hockey's a little weird that way. So it's hard to say that these teams have no chance before the season even begins of making the playoffs, but in my mind, it's very, very, virtually no chance that any of these teams are a playoff team in 2019-2020. And let's start, number one, the obvious one. Everyone knows they're awful right now, the Ottawa Senators. Um, Ottawa is going to stink again next year like they did this past year. This is a team that is and should be in full rebuild mode. They should be doing everything they can to acquire draft picks because they are lacking in every every position, every facet of the game. Uh, Goaltending, um, defense, f- scoring, everything. They need help everywhere. Um, this is pro- they're probably going to be the worst team in the league again this coming year. I I think I expect them to be. Um, their roster is not good, not good at all. Um, and it's going to be another long, long year in Ottawa. Things have completely fallen apart for them since Eric Carlson's gone. And it really started even before that. Um, but since Carlson's been gone, it's really fallen apart for the Senators. And um, it's going to be another awful year for them. Number two... Another team that was putrid last year, the LA Kings. I expect them to be awful once again this season. I don't see anywhere that they've improved. Um, this is another team that needs to go into full rebuild mode. Um, they, they l- Listen, they have Jonathan Quick, who's still a very good goaltender, but he's never healthy. It's year after year after year, Quick is mis- missing significant time four weeks, six weeks, sometimes more with injuries. And he's injured every single season. And and there's no question that Jonathan Quick is not the goaltender that he was, you know, six, seven, eight years ago when the Kings were winning Stanley Cups. He just isn't. And this whole Kings team is not even close to what they were, you know, six, seven, eight years ago when they were winning Stanley Cups. Not even remotely close. This Kings team needs a full rebuild um, there, there's their biggest problem is their scoring. They have no offense whatsoever. Their farm system seems completely depleted. There's no like young up and coming stars on this team. Uh, they they've tried to bring you know some new guys in and it hasn't worked out well. Last year was an absolute disaster. I think this year is probably going to be just as bad for LA. They need uh they they really need to start drafting some some high-end offensive talent. And, uh, you know, the defense is okay. The goaltending's good. um, But the offense is not there at all, and they are severely lacking in the young talent department. This is another team that it's rebuild time for. And number three, we don't have to go far. 
Um, they're very close California rival, the Anaheim Ducks. The Anaheim Ducks will not be making the playoffs this year. Um, this is another team who has been good for so long. Pretty much this whole decade, the Ducks have been a very good team. They've been a team that's consistently made deep playoff runs. And when you do that, you're picking late in the draft year after year after year, and you don't get that high-end early you know, first-round talent. And this team has just flat out run out of talent. Um, the you know Ryan Getzlaff is much much older and a shell of his former self at this point. Corey Perry was bought out this off season and is off to Dallas. Um, he he's been he's been awful and injury plagued the last three seasons. Um, his team really doesn't have much as far as goal scoring goes. They've got a lot of young players who are likely going to be making the NHL jump this year. And, um, I just, I don't see the high level talent in many of these guys that would be enough to make Anaheim a playoff team. They were under 500 last year. I think they're going to be even worse this year. Um, they were heavily reliant on John Gibson standing on his head last season, um, you know, to, to even keep them in games. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that again. I, I... I have very, very low expectations for the Anaheim Ducks um, this season. I think they're they're not even close to a playoff team, especially with the other teams in that division, like um, you know Vegas. You have Arizona getting better, Vancouver getting better. You have San Jose, who's lost a lot. They're even a playoff question mark this year. Calgary, you don't know which Calgary Flames team is going to show up, but if the good one does, there goes another playoff spot. I mean. Yeah, that's going to be, you know, the bottom of that division with L.A. and Anaheim really doesn't have much of a chance uh, to even think about playoffs this year. Moving on to number four, a team that I, I like a lot of the younger pieces there, but is still a ways away, and that's the Detroit Red Wings. Um, Detroit, it's been, we haven't seen them in the playoffs since, what, 2016, I believe. Um, or 2015, 15 or 16, one of those years was their last year in the playoffs. They haven't been back since. I really like Dylan Lark, and I love Anthony Mantha and Tyler Bertuzzi. I like a lot of the young pieces that this team has. They are not ready yet. They're still going to struggle next year. Um, you know, the Jimmy Howard, their, their goaltending's okay. I don't think they have a very good option other than Jimmy Howard. Um, uh, and I don't know what they're as far as like up and coming goaltenders are, but I think that that's an issue that's going to need to be addressed before they become a playoff team again. Defensively, this team is just lacking. This team does not have the defense that can get them into the playoffs. And again, they have some really good pieces, especially younger pieces there in Detroit, but they also have a lot of roster fill at this point who are just bodies filling out the roster while this team still. You know, some of the other younger guys continue to, to develop and hone their game in the minors or still in junior. This is a team that I think is on the right track and will be good again in the future, but certainly needs some more time before they sniff the playoffs again. And in the Atlantic Division, where you have Tampa Bay, Boston, and Toronto almost guaranteed to take the top three spots, you're looking at one playoff spot up for grabs in that division. And you have the Panthers, Montreal, you know, as the favorites to take that spot, which is why I really don't think Detroit has much of a chance at all. Or the last team that I also don't think has much of a chance at all of being a playoff team, also from that division, is the Buffalo Sabres. Sorry, guys, Buffalo's not making the playoffs this year. I just saw on Facebook, uh, complete. I think it was Complete Hockey News or maybe one of the other NHL uh, pages I follow. They they show that they're showing the projected rosters for like all the teams going into the season. And I looked at Buffalo's lineup, and oh god, it is not good. It's not good. They are heavily reliant on players who I don't think are ready yet or are not proven NHL consistent performers. Either guys going into their second year. Or, or guys who just haven't been able to produce at a high level at the NHL level on a consistent basis. Their goaltending, I don't trust at all. Uh, Olmark and 
Hutton as a one-two is just nowhere near the, the level of goaltending you need at, at the NHL level. Um, their defense is is down the epitome of mediocre. They they're they've tried to address depth this offseason. They have no high end talent. Their first line is Eichel, Skinner, and whoever they are uh, probably Reinhardt, whoever they play on that right side. That's a very good line, but that's it. They're a one-line team, and they've tried to address depth, but they don't have a good number two option down the middle. Da overall, down down the center role, they're extremely weak down the middle. Uh, they really don't have any goal scoring outside of that top line, not consistent goal scoring anyway. They're heavily reliant on guys who maybe will show up, um, like Marcus Johansson and Kyle Ocoso, or maybe we'll have bad years and then they'll be in big time trouble. Uh, like uh, defensively, they they have no high end defense. Their defense is is all middle pair or bottom pair guys. Um, they they've added to their defense this off season with middle and bottom pair guys. They have no number one defenseman. I mean, really, talent-wise, Rasmus Dahlin is their number one defenseman. He's 19, going into his second year in the NHL. You can't be reliant on him to be a Drew Doughty or a, a Victor Hedman-type player. He's not there development-wise yet. He, he'll be there when he's 24, 25. He's not there at 19. They're putting a ton of pressure on him. The rest of their defense, I mean, Ristolainen's probably going to get traded. He's been a huge disappointment. Jake McCabe, a middle pair guy. Zach Bogosian, a veteran bottom pair guy at this point. Brandon Montour, middle pair guy. Colin Miller, middle to bottom pair guy. John Gilmore was in the AHL last season. Defensively, he's atrocious. He He's not going to come up and be a top pair defenseman in the NHL. I just Buffalo has a lot more work to do. They've got to find a set. Basically, they need to find a second line that can score because right now they only have one scoring line. They need a second line that can score. They need one, if not two, high end defensemen that they don't have right now, and they need a true number one goalie, which I don't think they have right now. Carter Hutton was disappointing last season. Hutton was disappointing. And I don't know, maybe he bounces back and has a better year this year, but I don't see him being a true number one full-time starter. They've got goaltending issues. They've got defense issues. They've got scoring depth issues. Buffalo is not making the playoffs, guys. So especially in that division where you have Tampa Bay, Boston, and Toronto locked up in those first three spots basically before the season even begins. So... Those are the five our five NHL teams that I think have virtually no shot of making the playoffs going into this season. Um, Ottawa, I think, will be the worst team in the league. The, K the Kings will be a, have another awful year. Anaheim's going to struggle a lot. And D Detroit just isn't there yet. And Buffalo, still too many holes in that lineup. No matter how good of a season Jack Eichel has, no matter how many goals Jeff Skinner scores, Two players don't make you a playoff team. And that's basically what Buffalo has, two players. So uh, with that, like, comment, share, subscribe, follow on social media. Check out uh, Off the Wall Hockey on all of those platforms as well, Twitter and Facebook. Those links are down in the description. If you'd like to further support the channel, the links to our Patreon and merchandise store are down in the description as well. Keep spreading the word about this channel. Let's keep this thing growing. We are on our road to 1,000 subscribers. So if you can help us get there in any way, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you guys soon.